Atlantic Pale Ale. What the fuck is this? Short to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I have got a beer from the Sharps Brewery based down there in Cornwall and I've got a bottle of their Atlantic Pale Ale. Now, to be honest, I'm not massively keen on this brewery. Um, everything I've tried from them has been bang average. None of it has really stood out of me and all that, even though they're based down in, uh, I think they're based in Rock in uh, Cornwall. All their bottled stuff is bottled elsewhere. So, you know, they make a big thing about being from Cornwall and all that, and all the bottled stuff is, um, you know, done elsewhere. And they've grown. I mean, to be fair to them, you know, it sounds like I'm slagging them off. I'm not. When they first came out, they started doing that doing bar stuff. That was brilliant stuff. And then. Everyone started drinking it, and it just got way out of control. And um, it got to the stage where they had to contract it out to get other people to brew it. So that's where they are now. But I was out and about the other day, and uh, I saw a bottle of this stuff. I've never tried it before, and it was basically the only decent beer they had in the shop. Everything else was, you know, horrendous stuff, like, you know, all the Carlsbergs and Heineken's and all that. So I've got this, and uh, I'm going to give it a review now. It's a pale ale, an Atlantic pale ale. Now, I don't know what they mean by that, whether it's a cross between a British pale ale and an American pale ale. There is the cap. It is a Sharps cap. Nothing really standing out on that. Usual caper from them. Uh, what are we getting on the nose? Not nice. Yeah, that usual horrible sulphur smell mixed with slightly gone off hops. Let's get it in the glass. Yeah, as I say, I'm not I'm not trying to knock them, but fucking hell, come up with something decent. So, let's get it in the glass. I've been drinking lager all day, um, German lager, and it's been really good. So I could be disappointed by this, but who knows? You'd be surprised. Some brewers can surprise you when you least expect it. What are we getting on the nose here? Well, that's slightly better. Sort of floral, floral hoppy notes on that. A little touch of citrus, but it's woody. It's to, it's, to me, it smells British. It's got that woody, pine, earthy smell rather than the big grapefruit that you get from the American hops. But it's cold, it's come out of the fridge. What's it say in the bottle? The Atlantic Pale Ale, the Atlantic Ocean, dynamic and constantly moving, possesses uh, an energy uh, which shape inspires. The Atlantic coastline is deeply important to us. We are proud to support the Blue Flag Awards which help keep beaches and bathing waters clean, yeah, because Cornwall is, you know, it's renowned for its tourist industry and it's an amazing place. If you ever get a chance, go to Cornwall. It is fucking amazing. It's better than Tottenham, put it that way. Um, right, what are they saying? Aroma, tropical fruit, hot, not really. Honey, honey malt, and a touch of candy floss. Nope, ain't getting it. Right, serve, best serve chilled, yeah, well this is chilled, it's come out of the fridge, it's got the food pairing, works with, brilliantly with, oh, buttered fish, battered fish, buttered fish, what a fucking twat, I always sound like a fucking dickhead when I read off the side of bottles, a lot of it's got to do with me bins, um, or mild cheese, everything goes with cheese and fish, 
great as an aperitif. Oh, fuck off. An aperitif. Tell me, what who, what sort of bloke uses the word aperitif? Unless you're talking about your fucking, your railings. An aperitif. Jesus Christ. Fuck off. And going for the per, an aperitif. Anyway, enough of that bullshit. Let's get it down the hatch. Very average. Very average indeed. There's some there's some subdued biscuit malt on the arse end. But immediately what you get is sort of subdued hops. There's no big flavours in this at all. It's almost like a lager. Which isn't a bad thing, but it tastes macro brewed, which it is, to be fair. But it's <clears throat> it's like a slightly hopped lager, more than a pale ale, to be honest. Everything about this screams subdued. Now this is cold, but they do suggest to serve it chilled. But whether that's to disguise the flavours or not, I don't know. There it is in the glass. It's very, very slightly hazy. And there's minimal carbonation on that, no head at all. And the alcohol on this is um, 4.5. Having said all that, I've pointed out all the negatives. The positives here, it's very drinkable, it's cold, and it goes down like a lava. It's not bad. All things considered, um, if they'd have called this a hot lager, maybe I would have. But it's top fermented, so that's probably why they haven't. If it, you know, if this was bottom fermented, then yeah, maybe. Um, put it this way. It's the it's the Switzerland of beers. It doesn't offend anyone, it just wants to stay neutral. Yet yeah, there's a little bit of hops in there. Like British hops, they they sort of taste like they're sort of earthy and a little bit of spice on that. There's a little bit of biscuit malt on the on the arse end, maybe a little touch of you know caramel malt on that, but it just doesn't stand out. It's put it this way, I've I've had more lagers with more personality than I have with this. And you'd think from what they're calling it, a pale ale, that it would have more more character, more depth to it, but it's this, this slight grapefruit and you know fruity notes coming through on it but you know it's it doesn't really stand out for me i know it's a pale ale you know i've had some pale ales in the past that have really sort of hit the spot and you know they do the um <laughs> that's the real sign of a piss in it <laughs> when you're pouring a bottle out and nothing's coming out <laughs> but uh yeah it's it's just okay, and it's typical of what sharps do. They brew beer that is 
not obtrusive. The tribute, the doom bar that they do, um, God, that is such a fucking middle of the road beer that I've, I've refused to drink it in, in pubs now. Not that I'm a beer snob, it's just boring. I'd rather try something different than that. Um, I tried their, their Wolf Rock IPA, Red IPA, which was a fantastic ruby ale, I thought, or not fantastic, but a really good ruby ale. But, I don't know, this is just, I don't know. Maybe I've been spoiled, I've been drinking some really good beer this afternoon, and this just isn't doing it. It's, it's a typical attempt at a, a sort of cross between British pale ales and American pale ales. There's some hoppy fruitiness, as I say. There's a little bit of, you know, earthy spiciness and a little bit of malt on the back end, but it's... It's just bang average to me. So what would I give it? Um, all things considered. And to be honest, you know, as I say, they're really not doing much for me at all, this brewery. Um, I would give them, well, I'd give this one a 6 out of 10. And I'm being reasonably generous. And the reason I'm doing it is because it's not making me you know, say, oh, there's red flags here. There's no red flags on it. It just, it just goes down. But there's no character, no, no real bold flavours that I'm getting. Um, I know it's a pale ale, and they, you know they're not supposed to have bold flavours. But I've tasted pale ales with a lot more character and a lot more flavour than this. Um, so yeah, a, a generous six out of ten. And to be honest, I can't think of any reason why I would want to go out of my way and buy this again. Sad, I know, but if it was handed to me for free, I would drink it, but that's about it, I'm afraid. Again, Sharps, you're, you're doing what you do best, mediocrity. But there you go. That's my opinion, as of course, these, all these reviews are my opinion. And that is bang average. And remember, beer is working class champagne.